Hello, coaches. Welcome back to another episode of Coach Better Spotlight. In today's episode, I'm chatting with Carrie Zimmer, fourth grade teacher at GEMS Dubai American Academy in the UAE. Carrie has a wide range of experience, including being an instructional coach in her previous school. So her thoughts in this conversation provide great insight into the needs of a classroom teacher with the perspective of a very recent coach. Today's Spotlight episode highlights exactly what classroom teachers need from coaches. So for instructional coaches who are looking for ways to support their classroom teachers in just the right way, this episode is for you. If you enjoy any part of this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more conversations like this, please subscribe to our channel and click the notifications bell to find out every time we release a new episode. Remember, you can also listen to the full Coach Better episode wherever you get your podcasts. We are passionate about the impact coaching can have on student learning, school culture, and teacher professional growth, and we want to help you coach better. We've got some great opportunities for more learning after today's conversation, so stick around all the way to the end. Welcome back to another episode of Coach Better. Today, I'm here with Carrie Zimmer. Carrie, can you tell us a little bit about your educational background? Sure. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Carrie, and I'm currently living in Dubai. I'm a fourth grade teacher at GEMS, Dubai American Academy. And prior to that, I've spent seven years at the American School of Milan as the ed tech coach for their lower school. So you have a very critical perspective because you have been a coach and now you're back in the classroom again. So you can really see both sides of what we're going to talk about today, which is awesome. When you're talking about just showing up and being in the room as a coach, sometimes that's like, but what do I do when I get there? So what are some good opportunities for coaches to do when they come into the room? What are their opportunities to work with you? What would you like? Sure. To I yeah, I think for me, what like... Maybe if the conversation that you're having beforehand is similar to what you would have with whoever is your evaluator or feedback person, your supervisor for the year, because like one of my goals this year is to improve my ability to do reading conferencing within like the readers and writers workshop kind of format. And I need someone that's in there that would either run like run student conferences so that I could watch them or would sit with me and kind of like we would do it as a duo so that I could, you know, learn from their experience if that's something that they feel like they're, you know, a better, um, that they have more experience with. So for me in that setting, like that would be what I'm looking for is someone who could come in and, you know, model the idea of doing student uh, this conferences with students for reading and writing and then who would do them with me or then watch me do them and provide me with a little bit of feedback so that I could, you know, kind of grow and improve my practice. You bring up a really good point that I think comes up in coaching circles a lot is how do we tie the coaching process to teacher individual professional goals? And you have described what I think many coaches would see as the like ideal. If I know what your professional goal is for the year, then I can focus and target everything I do as a coach on helping you reach that goal. But a lot of the time, those goals are private and, you know, they probably should be, right? They're private between the teacher and the evaluator. So would you say you would want a coach to approach you and like just directly ask you what your goal is? Or would you say that should be kind of left up to the teacher? Like how do we walk that kind of fine line between what may be a very personal private goal for that teacher and the desire of the coach to really want to support that teacher in reaching their goal with no judgment on what that goal is? Yeah. Um, you know, the, I think for me, like something that I've noticed about coaching is that the most important thing about coaching is probably not the expertise that you have. It's probably more the relationship you're able to establish with the different teachers. And I think if it's the right person is in the job, the person in the classroom would feel okay with sharing that in most circumstances with the coach. I think when it probably becomes tricky is if 
the relationship isn't established between the coach and the classroom teacher and it feels like there's some layer of judgment or it feels um, you know like where they're you know where they can't be safe in that relationship but I if the right person is in the job I don't know that there's too much of an issue with that because I've always felt like with my role as a coach people are always pretty willing to share with me their struggles and the things that they were going with because I think I came with an attitude is that it doesn't matter where you are or what you're working on. It's just a matter of moving forward. And I think if a coach can go into a situation with that kind of growth mindset that we've all know and, you know, love is that, you know, if that's your attitude, then the teacher knows that you're coming, knowing that even you as the coach have areas that you're working on and that they're just there to kind of help you and assist you in, in that process. So, if the coach is the right person, I feel like that, that line is a lot easier to walk than it would be if there's more of a difficult relationship. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I think it's interesting. I've been having a lot of conversations with, I don't know how much you know about, we, um, Adura Learning offers a micro-credential program called The Coach where we mentor new coaches. And I've been having a lot of conversations over the past couple of years with my new coaches about um, I feel really lucky. I've worked with really good um, mentees and they are all like the right people for the job. But there have been some situations where they have recognized someone else in their peripheral experience is not the right person for the job. How did this person get hired? And they're always asking me like, how do these people get hired? And it's such a good question because I don't think you know who is the right person for the job sometimes until they're in the job. And then it's so challenging to to come to that realization and then kind of work your way out of it. So I totally agree. It's got to be the right person, the job. Sometimes it happens that that's not the person that's there, which kind of sticks. Well, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think especially when someone's being interviewed for a job, I think many people present themselves really well in an interview and they know all of the right things to say and how to act and what to do to really present themselves in one way. But what you can do in 20 minutes is not the same as what the right person is capable of doing over the course of a year. And I think that's, you know, kind of the, the pitfalls of an interview is that you miss people that maybe don't interview as well, or you write them off just because of that. And that's something that I'm always constantly thinking of because I feel like I'm one of those people that I'm probably, you know, someone I think that did a really great job coaching within the setting I was put in. But I, don't, I know that I struggle to present myself well in like a short 20-minute like first impressions type of interview. So it's really interesting to me. It makes me think back to sorority rush when you're in college, right? Like you, it's all these fresh faces that you see right in the beginning and everyone's really excited about. But it's the ones that you take a second look at, I think, are usually the people that ter turn out to be like longer term, hardworking you know, less of that great first impression, but more of the, you know, long-term um, stamina and perseverance and work ethic that come with, you know, maybe it's not the, the, the shiny star that you see at the beginning. So. Now that is a whole another super interesting side <laughs> conversation that I would like to have with you. And I know we don't have time to have it now, but that is such a good point. Presenting yourself well in an interview, the, pros and cons, and I think it happens especially with tech coaches, of people being the shiny star. Like, those are, yeah, that was very good. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to check out our premium facilitated online courses. We only offer them once a year and early bird registration is open right now. We have 13 amazing courses you can choose from. Each course is eight weeks long and goes in depth into a focused topic and includes our best content to take your learning to the next level. Check out all the options in the link below. Courses run from October 7th to December 1st, 2019, and we won't run them again till next year. So don't miss it. If you've enjoyed any part of this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more great conversations about coaching with inspiring educators from around the world, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the notifications bell to find out every time we release a new episode. To hear the full-length conversation, subscribe to the Coach Better podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And if you're looking for even more resources to help you coach better, head over to adurolearning.com slash coach better to explore over 20 online courses designed by coaches for coaches. Catch us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Aduro Learning to connect with us. See you next week on Coach Better Spotlight.